Dear digital attendees of the Verbi Art Summit 2021, welcome to this session. We focus on the main theme of the summit, but with a specific view, uh, the role of artist residency. I hope that you will get some insight about the project that we'll um, show you, but also that you will get some more specific knowledge about and information about artist residency organization tools methodology so if you're an artist if you're a collector if you want to organize uh, such residency stay tuned until the end of the session we'll try to bring you some useful and pragmatic stuff also during this 45 minutes my name is nick lancho i'm the founder of the epfl lab which is the design research center of the epfl um, it's one of the two Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. We're sitting within the ECAL, the art school here, um, Ecole Cantonale d'Art de Lausanne. And we, we uh, are here to make the bridge between science, uh, design, technology, and innovation. Our mission is to move from tech-driven innovation towards convincing user experience and hopefully something which is sustainable. So we work a lot also around ecology and uh, resources here. We have artists, we have designers, we have engineers, we have also psychologists to monitor the impact of the artistic proposition. But uh, mostly also have the chance to be part of this uh, fantastic uh, journey, which was starts residency uh, coming from the European Commission. It's a full program dedicated to artist residency, and we'll talk a bit more about this. 45 artist residencies um, with new methodology tools and even a peer review publication. Um, so why such an emphasis on artist residency? Um, because scientist science is driven by scientists delivering scientific results. Um, and it's the case about uh, the challenge of ecology and resources. But this is probably not enough to change our values, our perspective, to face our issues. Uh, how can we include the cultural landscape which drives our perception, our behavior? How can we turn scientific results into something which is meaningful in our daily life, which might uh, bring us towards behavior change? How can it resonate with our human humanist dimension we need the artist. And artist residency is one way to involve artists in the context of science and innovation. So for this uh, session, I'm very proud to present to you our uh, three participants uh, today. And I'll start with uh, Daniele Simbieda. Uh, thank you for joining us. So Daniele, you're the creative director of uh, Leonardo IS. AST, it's the first organization in the world showcasing works uh, in the, at the intersection of art, science, and technology since 80, uh, 68, not 86, 68, so it's quite a long time. And you also edit a lot of peer review publication, books with MRT Press, organize also artist residency, uh, lectures, huge amount of activities around the world. You read the reference, you edit read the peer review journal um, uh, about this issue of bring artists and um, scientists uh, together. But you're also an artist yourself. You earn an MFA in digital media art, but with a focus on green uh, technologies and sustainable materials. Uh, you work also at the intersection of social practice, institutional critique, intervention, and new media. And uh, I'll say most of your works include, in fact, environmental uh, and technology issues. You even work, I know, on a project addressing the impact of art studio uh, in terms of uh, uh, environmental footprint. So. Um, for you, with all the experience that you have seen, you're at the core, really, of this relation between art and science. How, you do, how do you see this relation, and how does it influence your own work? Well, thank you, Nicholas, for having me, and for all of our panelists here. I'm very excited to hear uh, your contribution there. One area that I particularly am very passionate about, and I want to address, and I encourage others to address, is around those who are creating climate technologies or environmental technologies. You see green tech being evolved all over the world, whether that be with solar or battery technology or how we look at software, um, how we're looking at AI and evolve that. 
And in all of those developments, there are very few creatives or very few artists at the beginning of that conversation to talk about all the social cultural impacts. Similarly, there are very few indigenous uh, uh, contributors to those conversations as well. And I, I really was thinking about this conversation um, with the artist Amelia, Amelia um, uh, Bearskin, I think, the Winger, I think, is her last name. And she was talking about uh, through artificial intelligence, there are thousands and thousands of years of data coming from indigenous communities from all around the world. But the AI training sets that we're working with are really developed in the last few decades. And thinking about like, how do we think about our cultural institutions and technology and indigenous cultures to think about how we can actually address uh, the transformation of our, of our lands, of our cultural institutions, of our resources. One, one uh, project that, I, that is it's something that I continue to do, it's pretty ongoing, it's been going on for over a decade, uh, that, that I really see this with is called Art Inspector, Saving the Earth by Changing Art. And I'll share just one image with you all uh, for this. The, the art inspector's goal is to actually transform the way the art community, the art economy works. And this is not just about artist studios, but it's also around cultural institutions, it's around curators, it's around uh, the collectors. And it's also importantly around manufacturers, retailers, distributors, similar to any other economic model that you see out there. And with this project, it's, it's really about encouraging artists to begin to reflect on what it is that they're using to create their work. Um, and that starts not just with uh, regular artist materials, but that goes into digital materials as well. Also going into the way that our studios are set up and uh, looking at who uh, and how we award and, and produce artwork that is using green technologies and also uh, sustainable materials. The, what, I, what I found doing this project for so many years is, are a, a couple things. One is that there's very few organizations or artists that are practicing in this way. I'm not talking about upcycling and I'm not talking about using repurposed work. I'm really, really talking about um, being the provocateurs, the trend makers and actually shifting the, uh, the materials that are put out there on the market. I feel like if artists begin to start to use this transformation, we'll start to see some other um, trend models and trend cycles happen subsequently from that. Uh, the only one that, the only organization I see that's really globally been able to really start to measure this well, and I'm glad to see that they're part of this conference is Julie's Bicycle just based in London and they're they're the only way their only model out there for creatives to actually measure this these particular tools although this is something that I'm also very interested in developing but part of it is that the the entire art supply industry meaning those who go to rate retail manufacturing to retail is around 500 billion dollars it's not it's actually not very large in the in the in the big scope of things and they borrow from car manufacturers, industrial manufacturers. Uh, the, the pigments that we get, as an example, are, are subsequent of, of other industries itself uh, because there isn't a demand from the art sector to, to actually create and evolve and build out green materials. Subsequently, also, if you have some, some new innovative material and you put that out there in the market as a test pilot, they don't consider the artist as part of that market. And the, thus the artists do not have the opportunity to actually test out, try and explore uh, those, the new manufacturing models that are, that are produced. Um, in part, there's a lot of broken parts of this system. And within this, and then within this circular economy of arts and culture, we have the opportunity in today to start to make that demand and start to make that shift. We saw with the shutdown and the pandemic, that eco ecological sectors, uh, ecological areas from uh, rivers to oceans, lands, were starting to revive again, to repopulate again, to start to, re to, to become alive. Uh, and we don't want to 
to lose that. And part of that is taking responsibility of as a, on our own as cultural makers, cultural contributors to make that happen. And I think that there's parts of this that can happen in residency. And I encourage residencies that are connecting, for example, uh, I think that the Edinburgh Festival has uh, a component of it that looks at a, a looking at sustainability awards uh, as as part of their um, their mission as their cultural re reflection. And if we're looking at uh, our own way that we are modeling residencies, how are we incorporating um, important ecological values into those, as well as um, indigenous uh, technologies, indigenous rights values that will help really make those residencies uh, uh, address some of the some of the environmental issues that we've been facing over the last you know, many decades. What I can really see is that you also have this uh, very specific or perhaps unique approach uh, in terms of the positioning of the artists between art uh, uh, and, and science itself and with a more uh, holistic uh, approach, which in fact it's matched quite well. So the, the vision of Jessica Morgan, uh, uh, the thing that she raised uh, during the last uh, uh, summit. We'll, we'll move to Kasia because Kasia, you, you did a residency uh, with this ecological uh, um, objective, uh, especially within the start residency. Uh, and uh, perhaps to start, we'll uh, just try to show, I'll try to share uh, with you um, the first video uh, where we'll see you really not in a studio with a lot of toxic products, but really in the field with uh, uh, growers. is a unique, interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary and international project bringing together scientists, technologists, designers, food communities, but most importantly, growers. People that are managing our land and they are producing our food. Growers are contributing very vital data, sharing this openly with scientists, and then the scientists are returning very important insights that help growers to improve their farming practices and increase the overall resilience of their farming ecosystems. And this is one of the major challenges that we face, our generation of growers is facing today, how we can produce healthy food while protecting the soils. Shall we look at soil as well a little bit? Yes, let me show you the sensor. Yeah. <laughs> so here is one of our uh, flower power, the growth sensors. We'll take our app, let's connect. You see it's connecting. Mm -hmm. You see, here is the data. Oh yeah. And you can see the moisture and what else can we see? So you see historical record of the moisture over the last months. Mm -hmm. Sunshine, mm -hmm. like light intensity yeah, yeah, yeah. and soil temperature. So with the Agro Observatory Residency, my main idea is to take the soil and put it on the pedestal, so to speak. And maybe that way help to kind of create a, a much more emotional and intimate and personal relationship to soil, to earth, to dirt. I wanted to design a software for myself just to start looking at various parameters and then we realized that actually that is also lacking for um, Grow uh, interface and, and now this um, software which I made is going to be integrated with um, Grown's own website. So basically the software which I made transforms the uh, JSON file which are available online in a very easy way, you know, very simple way, it just makes visualization. We want to do one artwork and basically the quality of video and the audio will in a way depend on the uh, condition of the soil from around the area. If for example soil is dry or depleted, you know, one might get really pixelated image and very crackling sound. However, if soil is really good and everything runs smoothly, that's exactly what will happen with your computer. The, 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 the image and the sound is going to be smooth and beautiful. The 
initiatives like the STARTS residency are opening up very interesting opportunities for this type of projects that do not only want to use science to influence policy, but they also want to involve the society, citizens, into the scientific inquiry and into the delivery of scientific research. I believe the arts have a transformative power and they can be a catalyst for transformative projects like Rome. So Kezia, we saw this uh, amazing project between the growers and you. You're a designer, you're an artist, you're a coder, you're really at the, is this inter intersection between uh, art, design and technology. Um, with this focus on nature, we saw so many of your projects in, uh, in famous places like the VNA, uh, the Tate Matter and the uh, Saint Pompidou. But here, when you were really with growers, with scientists, and then you show this kind of strange image or this new type of visualization. It's a bit different. It's more uh, something which is more emotional, uh, more direct than, you know, the traditional curves and, and data uh, patterns that we usually well, had was perceived. Uh, what was the impact? Was How does it start in terms of dialogue? They, they, they were a bit worried at the, at the beginning or how, how did it go? Um, I have to say that, first of all, um, the residency, which I did in... Uh, um, Uh, for, for vertical starts um, was probably one of the most uh, challenging but also interesting residencies I have ever done because um, I was working with Grow Observatory, which was a very particular setup. It was a consortium of 18 universities scattered across Europe. Um, and uh, I was working with a number of um, soil scientists and also individual growers and their task was to monitor uh, soil moisture of European soils um, with the uh, hope that we can manage soils better for the future, for future droughts, which inevitably will come. Um, and that posed a tons of very interesting challenges because it's, you know, it's a very, the soil, soil science is very particular uh, science and very part particular knowledge for a start, but also we were dealing with a gigantic amount of data, which was of course um, streamed through the, uh, I think about 15,000 sensors, which are scattered all over the place. Um, but also, you know, soil as such as a subject has a huge cultural and historical um, Um, symbolism and, and it kind of, you know, it's a subject which is, as Timothy Morton would call it, hyper object, something which it's very difficult to wrap our minds around. <laughs> However, in the end of the day, soil is something which we very much depend on. And I have read recently that apparently it's one of the most precious substances in the whole universe because Earth is probably at the moment the only known, um, you know, uh, planet or, or uh, the, the, the kind of um, body which, which contains soil. And regardless the knowledge, regardless the beautiful intricacies which one can uh, find in such a complex subject, you know, everybody was concerned with the one thing, how can we communicate the fact that soils and, and work of farmers is so vital to public, to people who are outside Um, that circle, you know, the, to, to people who kind of go to the uh, uh, supermarkets and pick up courgettes and cucumbers, not even thinking about how much work, uh, how much passion, you know, how much knowledge um, goes into, you know, producing this food. Um, and, and that also kind of, I think, brings me to another thing which I wanted to make uh, talking, uh, while, while we started talking about um, being part of this symposium, Nicolas, the, the, the word product in, is especially, not product, sorry, resource, especially in context of talking about nature. I have a huge problem with the word resource because in the end of the day, I think, you know, especially through my practice, what I'm trying to kind of convey is this kind of idea of looking at nature, you know, at, at, at entities such as soil, As a, as a collaborator, as a kind of non-human maker who is our partner to sustain ourselves in this planet together rather than, than a product, um, than a resource, you know, because resource always kind of brings this kind of um, <coughs> connotations of exploitations and colonialism and uh, serving rather than 
co-working and making things good for everything. Thank you very much for, for this amazing experience. And, and I will now uh, move to uh, Ralf because uh, Ralf Dunn, uh, so let's be clear, you're the, uh, the instigator of starts bring the artists within the uh, science uh, on the horizon 2020, uh, this European, uh, uh, um, this program from the European Commission. And your first background is, in, in fact, is to be a real scientist. Now, you were a physicist working in astrophysics, and, and then you, you went back on Earth uh, working for the European Commission at the, at the DG Connect, uh, more on the information technology. But what I noticed, what is interesting, is that uh, the mission of DG Connect is not only um, uh, economical growth or innovation, it's also about sustainability, uh, uh, inclusive growth, uh, and so there is very interesting objective here. And then you really start the creates to involve artists, uh, and you, you you create it first. So, and I would say that when we see the residency that we we, we did over the last uh, years with Start, it was not only dedicated to pure uh, digital technologies, but it was also to get to the impact on uh, environmental and uh, quite large relation between scientists and an artist. So how you do you see now the evolution of starts and, and the impact when you see here now the results, especially with the Kazian and other um, project? Thank you, Nicola. Um, I, um, I'm very happy with this year's uh, topic of the Art Summit, uh, resource hungry cultured landscapes, um, because it reflects in, in many ways, as you have already pointed out, what we do in DG Connect and in the European Union. Um, cultured landscapes clearly refers to our modern cities, but more general to the way we live, work, travel, eat, how we grow things, as was explained by Kasia. Um, so the topic reflects also this, this link of the need for sustainability with the arts. What can the arts do to make our cultured landscapes, as it's called in the Art Summit, more sustainable, more in line with their natural environment? Now, as, as you probably know, in the European Union, we have addressed the sustainability challenge by launching the Green Deal. And uh, our president, Ursula von der Leyen, has emphasized the need to combine our efforts towards this Green Deal uh, with, uh, uh, by, uh, with, with, with artistic thinking. She condensed this idea into the so-called new European Bauhaus. Um, she made, of course, reference to the Bauhaus movement at the beginning of the 20th century uh, that demanded that design and architectures adopt the newest technologies. Back then it was uh, mass production and new materials in order to be able to make better living spaces accessible to all. So the Bauhaus of the 20th century was in many ways a social movement. A 21st century Bauhaus, of course, must not only be a social movement, but also an ecological movement with a particular emphasis on sustainable ways of living uh, and to adopt today's technologies, uh, foremost digital technologies, of course, to make uh, our living more sustainable. Um, this thinking uh, that we put forward in the Green Deal is of course very much in line with a program we launched and that you already mentioned starts, science, technology, and the arts that we have launched uh, in, uh, in 2016 uh, and that combines artistic thinking and with today's most advanced digital, and, and as you correctly pointed out, also biotechnologies. We do not focus only on digital technologies and, and how these digital technologies and biotechnologies can together with the arts address these urgent challenges in sustainability, but not only in sustainability that we have. Um, uh, allow me to say that also the contemporary institutional art world, of course, should address and indeed is addressing ecological thinking, as was pointed out by Daniela, and use of digital technologies. Um, but they do so in a rather peculiar way. Uh, for example, there's major galleries like Hauser and Wirt or Base Gallery that have created technology labs, uh, for example, Base X. Um, um, unfortunately, they still focus on use of digital to either create art objects, so they use uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, or to sell art objects, right? Now, nowadays, it's very fashionable to use blockchain technologies to make artworks unique or to make them traceable. Uh, this is, uh, in my opinion, a very limited view. Um, 
already at the beginning of the last century, a, a philosopher called John Dewey, who was very famous in epistemology, already uh, uh, remarked that art is not so much about this creation of objects, but as he called it, about triggering experiences, art as an experience. And I think this is a very important uh, link to what we are discussing today, namely how can we create uh, a sustainable environment and a sustainable living. Um, so I might add art creates signals that trigger change. And I think this is a very important aspect. This might very well be a key argument why the arts can help in the sustainability challenge. Art is a trigger of, of change of individual and of social behavior. Uh, Dewey, uh, by the way, was a key person in the US equivalent of the Bauhaus, the Black Mountain College in North Carolina that hosted in the course of, I, I think, something like 20 years, very important artists like Robert Rauschenberg, uh, um, uh, Buckminster Fuller, also very famous scientists like Einstein were there. Um, Rauschenberg was later also involved in the EAT, Emerging Art and Technology Movement at Bell Labs, uh, where artists and engineers were giving a, a, shall I say, safe space to explore freely without constraints their ideas. Uh, so there's a history to, to, to this thinking that we now promote in, in, in starts uh, and, and following this tradition of Bauhaus and EAT and Black Mountain College starts facilitates such safe spaces for exploration between art, technology, science uh, with a range of activities. Uh, um, so the first one is of course the starts residences that you mentioned and that we are mainly here to discuss. So this is a program that finances long-term stays of artists in technology institutions uh, but then we also have the annual Starts Prize that honors successful collaborations between art and technology. Uh, with the help of the European Parliament, we also um, try to create regional start centers in various cities across Europe that facilitate and trigger encounters between art and technology. We have already a very nice example, of course, in, in by the work of Kasia, but let me give you two more examples of, of Starts Prize winners um, that uh, that are a bit uh, symptomatic for, for what, what, we, what we try to achieve uh, with starts. Um, the first is the, the, the 2000, uh, 2019 winners of the starts prize uh, was an architect duo from Barcelona that engaged thousands of citizens in creating collectively the future of a, of a Barcelona district. Um, they, they wanted to avoid this uh, purely technology-driven smart city approach that, of course, is, is today very, uh, very well known, and that is sort of in line with this dystopian vision of Alphaville that Jean-Luc Godard uh, pointed out in his movie, right? So uh, computers optimize and decide city life, and citizens have no role in that. Um, another very interesting project that goes very much along uh, things that were said by Daniela and Kasia is uh, Andrea Link's uh, project Design by Decay and Decay by Design, uh, which is a series of artifacts that exhibit designed decay. Uh, the, these artifacts were done uh, together with Ginkgo Bioworks, which is a biotech company in, in Massachusetts. Um, uh, Andrea Link illustrates the potential of combining two key technologies, namely uh, digital and biotechnologies, to create new products uh, that are sustainable by design. Um, so I, I guess with these two examples, I, I, I stop. Uh, I just want to quote perhaps Olafur Eliasson, who is one of these artists who have since a long time engaged into, into uh, his idea of art and sustainability and who was very much involved in starts. He, he, he put the role of artists very succinctly and he said, um, artists put ideas and values into physical forms and processes. And I think this, this sort of grasps this idea of art for change, art as experience. And, and, and I think this is something we might want to discuss uh, in, in the remaining minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. And in fact, we had the chance to have two years ago, uh, Olafur at the, the Verbier uh, Art Summit. He, he joined us. There was also plenty of snow uh, during this year. Uh, it was also really nice to discuss this kind of, of issue with him. Perhaps one point to start our, really our debate is, is really to to look at this difference, I will perhaps come back to uh, Daniele, uh, because 
You, you're really, you have papers coming more from the scientific side, more well, for the artistic side uh, at Leonardo. And here there's a kind of a major difference, in fact, between the process, uh, I would say perhaps the thinking, but at least the process where uh, a scientist needs to be, you know, quite focused to, to show that they can redemonstrate a result that can be reproduced. And, and it goes to where it's always more and more narrow, uh, often uh, uh, outcomes or point that you try to measure, observe. And it's also legitimate them to produce knowledge. Whereas artists usually have a more holistic approach. So it's a bit more difficult to say now, here we have some knowledge that we can observe or measure. Uh, so then how the discussion goes together and it's, uh, it covers a different area. How, how you see this, this dialogue, it's quite difficult with one very narrow one and the other one, which is much more uh, holistic. So I, one of the things that I think uh, we can all probably agree on since we both kind of are ha, have um, drinking from the Kool-Aid of art and science uh, collaborations is that there are creative scientists and engineers and um, similarly there are artists that that follow very narrow processes uh, but there's a lot of that community that meets in between and 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 shares uh, those particular crosses around experimentation uh, I think that it, it's in the approach of how these silos were designed, where where scientists has to lay out their predictive models in a very measurable way, whereas artists are have this end outcome that is is a little bit more ambiguous, and they describe the process and the and the idea of which they're going to approach and approach that, and it's a very particular skill set that that in the science community, they can benefit from that particular process, vice versa, thinking about how can we actually measure things from the scientific models into the, the artistic process. I think what needs to happen is, and what I've seen over and over again, especially when it comes to conversations around residencies and collaborations in these spaces, is that translation of the dialogue and translation of what that process means. And it's, it's that facilitation that starts does and that Leonardo does that that helps make that move along because there are a lot of connections and similarities there, um, but it also creates a, a sort of push pull when when the scientist is is really sort of thinking about these measurable outcomes from the onset. Uh, they have to sort of be able to loosen up and 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 be able to understand how the that artistic process can. Uh, uh, can evolve with them in that particular process, or they can find something in between that's identifiable. And there's a lot of methodologies that that Leonardo has published and Starts has published, and many other organizations has as have as well. Uh, and I think those are really important areas to to value is where those those um, connector points are and who is facilitating, and who is curating those connector points to make that translation happen. On the one hand, uh, it's it's great to have this residency because it really helped to start this collaboration. It's it's a big hope because you know the, the first theme of the debate is about hope and it's what, what we're doing right now. But at the same time, it it took in fact much more time and effort to to come up with really strong outcome between the two, a real dialogue and and something that people on both sides can use in the in the noble uh, uh, sense. The the whole residency, first of all. Um, the way it was facilit facilitated, it allowed, it allowed, it kind of invited me um, or gave me, gave me opportunity to really deeply take my, to take my time to really deeply engage in, you know, things which are, things which are of concern for scientists and the growers and, and uh, the, that is the institution who was my host. Um, but also, um, it allowed for a for for a time for me to kind of not only consider you know my kind of initial ideas, but to observe the changes which I went through while I was getting all this new experience, all this new knowledge, and all um, um, you know all the all the kind of uh, results of this. Of this, you know, really deep and 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 rich dialogue. But I can actually really second what Daniel said. You know that um, I don't find myself. I don't really consider myself 
an artist as a kind of individual who comes and creates things. I'm kind of mostly collaborator and facilitator and a sort of platform maker, you know, um, which en enables hopefully other people, you know, like scientists to um, co-create a narrative with me so we can communicate all this amazing stuff to the rest of the world and through the either provocation or through the uh, storytelling or through the visual or, or through, you know, various various outputs which are which are available to me which I can provide um, and it's it's a kind of it's a very very collaborative work and I think that also reflects um, the, the, the role of artists and also how the notion of art is changing nowadays actually it has changed a very long time ago but I think that sometimes the mainstream didn't really catch up with that yet um, that we are all very interdisciplinary and we, you know, dab in into all these various um, disciplines and then we find interconnections in between them. And, and, and I think my role, you know, and, and roles of my peers is to kind of bring those, embody these interconnections and bring it to light. And, and, you know, and that's something which is very often overlooked in everyday life. That's interesting because we really feel an evolution and between the, the hope before the, the residency, although you had already many experience between this interface between the science and, 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 the, and the earth. But, and then you have really the, the future, how it develops and, and what is the learning. Uh, half also, when you started in, in 2016, uh, the, the starts, the whole starts uh, journey, you had hopes and, and now you see a lot of results. But what, what is the future? How, how do you see the future based on all, all the learnings that you have, the development, the impact? Because we all, I think, agree that it should go at larger scale. Uh, yeah, we, we all agree, but uh, <laughs> the question is whether those who have the budget agree, right? <laughs> um, uh, well, in, in 2016, I have to say, I, I had a very, very general idea of, of what I expect from starts, right? And, and, and I tried to express it in what I said before. It was mainly art. This is also what uh, Kasia was saying. Art is some sort of missing link between between different ways of thinking. So art is a, a, a conveyor of message. Um, I, I, I have to say I came to starts from, from a very different angle than, than it ended up to be in the end, right? I came from starts from the angle of how can you communicate science results in particular in climate change to a broader audience so that the broader audience in reaction to these, these, these scientific facts is willing to change its behavior. And here I thought narratives uh, um, uh, on climate change, narratives uh, on, on, on how you can address climate change produced by arts, by filmmakers, by, by whomever, could be a way to, to, to overcome this, this distance between what we know and what we do, uh, what we know we should be doing and what we are in the end not doing, right? which is all related to this idea of social change, I think, that, that, that the arts can trigger. Uh, in the end, we came up, of course, because as you pointed out, I work in a, in a directorate that pushes for the, uh, digital technologies, or also to the idea that art can help address issues of technology. Uh, in particular, if you talk technology, you not only talk uh, efficiency and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and speed and, and, and I don't know what, you also talk the human dimension. And, and here often artists, um, especially in digital technologies, are very helpful because they are, again, some sort of missing link between the digital technology that is sometimes very, very unapproachable and the human who's supposed to use it. Um, I always like to cite this very, very small example of, of, of a very well-known German company that invited artists uh, to come to its factories where workers and robots were working together. And there was a certain tension. And then the artists came up with, a, in the end, you might argue, very trivial thing that suddenly made this, this link between, between workers and robots less stringent, right? So that workers no longer felt a bit like Charlie Chaplin in modern times, right? The, the worker who's, who's running with the machine and not the machine that is running for the worker. So I, I think there's two aspects to, 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 to starts and uh, uh, my interest sort of flipped from one to the other. The one is more this art as a narration in order to induce change and the other is art as a means to 
bring, shall I say, empathy to, to digital technologies. I think more and more people uh, understand this need to see technology broader than simply efficiency and, and cost uh, and, and to see it as, a, uh, as an ecosystem where there is humans and where there is machines. And, and, and I think this is something which now even the most hardcore technologist understands. And, and, and this is helpful for starts. But uh, to conclude, I, I think it, it goes in both ways. And I think it's a positive feedback loop because if we go back to this uh, uh, Bauhaus example, we saw that at the time we had a new way to produce materials and a big piece of concrete, of glass. And, and all the thinking of the artists helped also to, to open new perspective for architecture in terms of light circulation, conception of space. But this opened a huge market. So, so that what is uh, fantastic is to see that working together opens better life, open new uh, perspective in terms of really daily life experience, but at the same time also open new perspective for the market. So there's no antagonism between the two. Um, I would say perhaps to underline what we got uh, out of this uh, 45 residencies of, uh, of Stark's residency. We're able, because something that I promised at the beginning of this session is that you have some pragmatic stuff. It's, it's really, we saw that what is important is, and it was also underlined during this uh, session, to have uh, somebody who helps the moderation, help people to understand uh, each other. Uh, that a facilitator helps a lot, and we can avoid we cannot avoid to have a facilitator, especially at the at the, the beginning. The second thing is how we can express between artists and scientific each our own objective because because we have our own objective in our own community and to uh, to build also a common objective so that we have we know what is personal and we know what is common and not everything must be in common or personal. And having this idea, it helps also a lot. Ultimately, we can also benefit from digital tools to help the interaction, but personal connection, being physical with, physically with the people is something which is crucial. The immersion, the, the feelings that we can experience on both way is something which is absolutely critical here. Um, I think you can go still on the SARTS residency uh, uh, pages uh, with also the SARTS web, web, web page. Uh, you will find also uh, open source tools, uh, platforms that have been developed to uh, uh, promote this uh, things. You will see also the results of several uh, Red Sea, there are always new call and a lot of things going on. So I encourage you to go on the START website. You can also see the, the project more into detail of, of Kezia, uh, but you can see also other projects that she did. Uh, I also encourage you to go on the Leonardo and follow all the publications because here we have really the publication how so artists and scientific can publish together. Uh, this is something quite difficult, but we think it's also important. And that was also one of the outcome. Uh, it's that artists must also be entitled to produce knowledge. It's not only the scientists who produce knowledge, but also the artists and vice versa. The, we can also consider, uh, we need to consider also the creativity of the scientist. Um, so it goes both the way, but with each our their specificity. So all these recommendations are available, uh, the tools also available. And so I hope that you will continue to follow this and perhaps try to organize if you have the capacity or the interest uh, uh, artist residency and contribute to develop this initiative that we have both in the US uh, with Daniele and with the half in, in Europe and so supporting artists on this. So thank you very much uh, for attending this uh, session and enjoy the rest of the summit virtually and, and let's stay tuned to go towards new projects.